I'm only assuming that the date I'm seeing here is stuff that you guys are set up, right? So, no. I, uh, no, some of this would matter. This would be for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Most Jeff, can I record you? Yeah, absolutely. I have two daughters. We don't have what you have doggies? Yeah, two of them. One? Yeah, one. All right, so this, let, let's 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 do this. Let's take your tractors, okay? Obviously our steer axle we call it steer. Okay. Your 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 drive axles. Do you call it do you want to are we gonna use this drive axle? For both of them, are we okay with that? The word drive to represent the, the you know number two and number three axle. Okay, do we have any tractors that have uh, those are road tractors? Do we have any spotters or yeah. anything where we have drop axles or lift axles, anything like that in the fleet Not that we're tracking tires on? I no. Not um, and what about? What's the uh, stuff trailer are we just tandem axles okay so we can call that trailer and no, no other odd trailers or odd tractors or spotters or so anything nothing if we did want to add i mean this is just a question if, yeah. if we wanted to add i'm going to say a lift axle is that something you can add yeah, yeah. okay in the future yeah. so i'm going to take out this tag axle because that's kind of we're not probably utilizing it right so there's no sense in even getting it involved in the mix. Now, Dolly, is, is there, yes. yes, we have it? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so, okay. And it's a sing, it doesn't matter, it's a, just a Dolly, right? Just a Dolly, okay. Okay, so those are, that, that's pretty well configured. And then we've got a bunch of items down here at the bottom. <clears throat> this tire configuration would have been the footprint. Okay, I'll give some acknowledgement here. So we have tractor duels, yep. we have tractor single, and so forth. Does this look accurate? We don't have a single. We have we don't have any single axle tractors, do we? No. No. Well, that's okay. uncount. Would it count? Only if you wanted to track the tires. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not worried about yeah. the tires on the yard truck. But... So tra tractor single axle, mm -hmm. I can maybe inactivate. Yeah. yeah I don't think we have it. That's okay that. with that. So we're not going to track tires on a yard spotter then. Yeah. Oh, we just put the. I mean, that doesn't mean you can't put tire cost in. You can still use a part. You can still put a part yeah, number in. You know we still assign them they, in the module. Well, if you use, if you did your yard truck tires as a standard part and not a tire, then you'd be able to charge your yard truck tires to an RO. That is true. That is true. You would have to because the word tire part type against the tire forces you to go through the module. You just use your part number and enter it as a standard part. Okay. Tractor wide base, so I'm assuming super single? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Trailer duels, trailer single axle? We don't have any single axle tractor. Hence, trailer super singles? Yeah. 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 Do we have trailer wide base? Yeah. Oh, I bought yeah, it. Yeah. Anvil does have a few. Yeah, I had a flat one of them. It cost me a fortune. This truck tire configuration probably take it out. I'm assuming. I wouldn't say why. Why? What does that do? What we're doing here, these, when you, here's where these go, guys, just to kind of make the reference of what we're doing. You would have or should have under a tractor dual. How can I access where you can see this? I'd have to, I'd have to go to IWS or something is this would have been the footprint. So it would have showed two steer tires and eight drives, right? So our veteran truck had a dual. Yeah, we have, yeah, it's, he's leaving that in there. He was talking about that one, the truck tire configuration just knocked out. That's what he was asking, what, what did that do? 
So these are your footprints. So this would be a tractor, two steer, and four drives, because they're super singles, okay? Now, how you, where you make this connection, and this is where you were talking about, Scott, about the unit was showing the wrong footprint, mm -hmm. is under, under master units, miscellaneous tire configuration. Let me just show it for everybody, so. Yeah, go to master units. I'll just use this unit number here. Go to your miscellaneous button, and you're gonna see a, a drop down here. Last modified by me. I don't remember doing it. Your tire configuration is right here at the bottom, okay? So if you're seeing the wrong footprint, that's why it's probably got the wrong one in there, or the wrong one selected. Okay. The reason you still see doubt is, well, it is because I'm at the end. One, two, three, you should have one, two, three, 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 Okay. What is this one? White base, I forgot what I was talking about. I don't think it matters. Find tractor number one. Yeah, there's it's a fictitious yeah, unit number. Tractor. Anybody got a number one in it? No. Okay. Okay, so that's the correlation between that setup. All right, back to here. Then we had tire out of service codes. This list can get horrendous. Okay, good. Looks like you cut it back. That these would be the choices that the mechanic would pick from a drop down. When they pull a tire off, is the Y that's pulled off. That's good to cut it back because otherwise it's pretty messy. Uh, tire rotation type, that would be blank anyways because there is no type. Tire size, these would be the size of the tires that you stock. Has anybody got 11 R's on their equipment? I don't think anybody's got any left, do they? If the yard is yeah, the yard's left. That which is out of the question, right? Yeah. You didn't activate this one. So you got eleven R's on your yard truck. But if you're not tracking oh. yard truck yeah. tires, then you can take it out, right? So you all are telling me with steer axle, steer tires, drive tires. trailer tires, and super singles. These are the only sizes you use. <coughs> 275, 295s, and 445s. Okay, okay. So this is pretty straightforward. Like so far. But you gotta have that on your file too. Yeah. <laughs> now I've got a question about that having to have it on the file. Well, this you is have to have it file. in the file, or does it have? Can it be in the system set up? Yeah, it, it, have be in, it does have to be yeah. only in file. Yep. Yeah. Front, the front of the file. Front of the file is the only one. Okay. Your tire type. Good. You have to get that. That's what I always do too. It's kind of an easy tool. Tread type. Hope you kept this simple. You did. Um, I believe that's it. <coughs> now, <coughs> let me think here in my <coughs> easiest thing. I can only, I'm just going to take for granted that you've done your footprints properly. Meaning, when we, when we, let me pull one up so I'm talking the same language. <coughs> I can only assume that when you set up a tractor, dual that you had two steer tires and eight drives. I can assume that you told it positions, whether it be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or whether it be left front steer, right front steer, left front outside, left front inside, you've done all of that, right? So then when you then when you link these to the tractors, we would be good there. Now on the tires themselves. So you all have three different tire sizes. So if I go to Ma uh, Tremble uh, Master Park Catalog, if I search <laughs> for tires. By, Here we go. Uh -oh, Here we go. By part type tire. Yep. Yep. 
I should see those three for sure. Hmm. You go see a bunch more. And that's okay if I see more because, but as long as those more aren't trying to be used. Okay, so let's, let's look at that. So Bartide tire, because this is what tells the tire module when this tire is being used, it has to be put on and dealt with through the tire module, not a, dot, not a uh, yard spotter, that their tire would be having a bar type of standard, right? <clears throat> it's gonna be a messy list. Oh yeah. It looks like it's coming up pretty messy. Yep. 45. Yard dog tire, first one. Yard dog tire. 11 R22. <clears throat> okay. Couple things, guys. What I would do is number one, you don't carry 45 different tires, right? Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. No, the, not really. The first thing that I would do is I would look, let, let's say yard dog tire we want to get rid of. Okay. I would clean this up, is what I'm getting at. Here's what you need to do. Double click on it, let it, let it, bring it up. First thing I would do is go to the shop tab and see what shop has that in their inventory. Okay. You show 11 and 33, but their on hand quantities are zero. So you know what I do? Delete this out of the system. Now how do we get delete? Just go up here and hit delete. And okay to do it. I Unless there's some in inventory and it won't let you. Unless there's some in inventory, then you have to go to that shop, and if they really don't have it, do an adjustment, get it down to zero, and get it out of here. I'm gonna let you all do this as a homework, but clean up your tires if you want to. I'm OCD, I would do it, but that's just me. Hit delete. Yeah, hit delete. Okay. We're good. Let's, right let's hit delete and see what happens. I don't think it's going to make you take it out of the inventory. I think it should pull it off. Oh. Okay. So now we got all kinds of possible problems. It says it's either in shop inventory, <clears throat> which we know it's not, or on an order. Or on an order, so meaning it's sitting on a PO. Or on an RO. Or an RO. Or, yes, exactly, there, that's the second piece. So now what you would have to do is you gotta go, what I do is I would go to the order inquiry screen for purchases, then do it for repair. Let me just show you what I would do just for one tire here. Search for it. Exactly. Yep, okay. clear it out. Unfortunately, you gotta, you're gonna have to do it one at a time. Me. So if I go to the report viewer and I go to the, that order inquiry, it was yard dog tire. Yeah, but I think it was the, it was ID was eleven R something. Eleven R. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So then go to my reports. Go to my orders. I want to look at purchase orders first. I don't care about closed ones. I just want to look at. I could probably just leave this alone. But my part number is that right there. And as long as my order status is open. No, watch your date for field. Yeah, yeah, watch your date. So I'm going to go back forever. So I'm going to put way back. Because it may be hung on something from 17. So we'll just go back to there. Let's just run it and see what happens. So this should show if this tire is on a PO in any status, that was pretty stupid. I probably should have just done it. Well, these are all closed. So in this case, all 11. So far, they're we closed, know it's- buddy, they're closed, buddy, they're closed. Good thing. Had you nervous there, didn't it? I was, I was fleeting at the yard all tire. So right now, at least on a PO, it's okay. It's not on order. So it's more than likely it's hung on a repair order, right? It's more than likely it's hung on a repair order, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 so, 
Let's see. I want to do repairs, all repairs, but I do want to just do oh. repair status. Yeah. yeah I guess my question is, what everybody got? What if some have eleven R's on their yard truck for? That way you're dropping the trailer a lot higher than the R. Open pending. Yeah. All right, so I got those. Is that what they're listed on? Eleven R's. Eleven R's power. Right. So if you, <coughs> that means you're, even if you let it all the way down, your trailer's dropped higher because you got low pros on your truck. So that means you got more chance of skipping drivers going over top of their fifth wheel. That's right. That was my question. So I got I that know. part number for open. Oh, I, well, I did. I did 17. Oh, you did? So this, yeah. All right, so this would show, wow. Boom! <coughs> oh, it's a systems <laughs> issue. Okay. <laughs> yeah. BMW problems. All right, now, you're right. We're getting close. I got one other thing to check. And that, it could be, it could be hung on the, re, what we call, on the requisition list. Oh, okay. Under right, we'll the manual. Don't get me Yeah. Probably not again. So I'll leave this all open and I'll just hit refresh grid here and see if anything shows up here. If it does, I'll look for that part number. He's pretty slick on the blame game, ain't he? I don't see it. Uh -oh. I've had them hung up on a back order too so by will, accident. Yeah, this will, let me delete this. It's not. <laughs> Miss Keyed or something. Yeah, the description. The description. The description. description. Yard code. Right? Yeah, yard code. How did you get that right click? Yes, that's one of the very, very, very few. I was going to say. Left. Yeah, there's not much of Yeah, and it's confusing because you can do it sometimes in the unit number and you get a few things like notes and sticky notes and things like that, but it's one of the few that I still clear that. All right, so that eliminates that. Let's see. Um, order, we did PO, we did RO. What's the 11? Oh, no, automatics. What's up with that? Mm, I must have messed up and did something. <laughs> Fat fingered it. What is automatic? What is, what is that anyway? Automatic. I don't know. I've never played with it. Did you? Yeah, I remember that now. What happened? He won't mend. He wanted to mend the maxes and auto oil. Oh. Uh, put a little spot there. I'm gonna put a bigger spot. Sorry. All right. Let me do this then. I'm gonna see if it doesn't like the uh, being in those shop inventories. shops anyways and just delete it and then try and see if that makes a difference. I didn't think it did. I think it only had to be here on the Alright, let's see. Okay, so 11 and 33. Yeah, Says three on hand. I, I didn't, didn't. No.
knocked out my part number. Exhaust tank. Oh, I got you. You got three exhaust tanks? Okay. Clamps. So, clamps. <laughs> clamps. 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 <laughs> That's it? Leave it out of here first. It says it's in use and cannot be used. It's in use. So you're going to think that'll be on a repair order somewhere. It's got to be. <coughs> and I thought I, I looked it in. So can you go to a repair order yeah. listing and search for that part that way? Uh, not from the listing. Are you sure? Yeah. I thought it was in there. As a what search. about parts usage? Can't you, can't you it wouldn't it show a repair order on parts usage report? Or it won't will it? Yeah, no, it well no, it only shows it just number, shows the number of quantities. It won't show you repair order. Right in the last what, one, three, six, nine, twelve months, something like that. Let me do that order inquiry again. Let me first of all let me while I'm here. What was the other one, guys? Thirty three? Thirty three. Yeah. Let me just <laughs> And this is the headache you run into when you when you try to clean things up after a long extended period of time. See if it could be a month. Mm. It probably won't let me do it here unless and because it's still gonna sh it still should say that it's in use unless it was tied to a letter. Could be an order ID. Yeah. Are you it's, sure? It's yeah, so it's gonna let you. It's, uh, it's gonna let you. Once again, back it on eleven. <laughs> hey, you have mastered this now, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some gauge. Send gauge back your email, Robert. <laughs> I hooked with somebody else. Yeah, it's on gauge. Their inventory and stuff. Okay, really. so it's under TMF. Oh, no, I don't say that. She probably set it up on the automatic reorder. So PMF 11 is a culprit because it, it went away on 33s. Yeah, yeah it, it's out of 33s. Yeah, it's 11, right? Yep. Come on, okay. don't be so confident. <laughs> Off the hook. <laughs> this time. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. EI. Let's do order inquiry repair. Let's just pull up PMF 11. Yeah, part <laughs> Step out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stay in so we can rub it in a little bit. No, y'all. All right, so we're pulling the for. Uh, you didn't do date. Close, but that's okay. The date. I don't uh, think. I don't know why it defaults like that, but. <laughs> oh boy. Probably a probably that purchase order then, right? That's repairs. Uh, what's that purchase order? Hey, that one down there. Yeah, it's a, that's a road tractor. That showing. road tractor down there, would it be hung up on it because it shouldn't have been on a road tractor? No, because the order was closed. That's what's controlling it. Oh. All right, so this is a PO. Um, we want shop 11, right? We only want um, open. Oh, we'll get our date here in a minute here. We just want. <laughs> Pretty complicated to hone in on. Yeah, one tire out of 45. We want, let's go, uh, cancel shouldn't matter, but we want complete, open. Let's see, this is a PO, so it could be impending if it's a vendor, and it could be not. Let's see what we got here. Uh, 
There it is. But it's received. It's not close. Aha. Didn't have a hyperlink for that PO, did it? It did, but it won't let me receive it from there. It oh, true. Up. So I'll put in that PO up there, and it is in receive status. And hit search, click the link, or I can actually close it from here. I'm going to do that just to make it easy. It's got to have an invoice. I'm just going to make up some garbage. Everybody will take that. <laughs> we don't have to close it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cheese. Oh, I could hear the wine behind that cheese, man. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, now, close the door. Just for the heck of it. Let me refresh this. Once upon a smile, it's a crap day. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we all got it. Oh, yeah. I'm in the catalog. I'm actually going to see just now. Uh, uh, guys, if we can do it from the catalog, even though it still shows in the shop. Because I didn't think you had to delete it out of each shop. I didn't think it was like that. <clears throat> I got to research for it because I copied and pasted that PO and I lost my part number. Unless it was just 11R22.5. It was. Was it straight 11R22.5. With no uh, point, I don't think, either. Right here. Make sure we don't have any human errors here. We'll do part time tire. Search. It was the first result too. Yeah, it's just two two five. some homework. So what's this telling us is we've got to get all our <laughs> open POs and yes. ROs that's why, before that's we the can first even step. begin to yeah. that's the first, that's that's why the first why step. The okay. clean up. Right. And then we got to start with that stuff because you need to clean it. Yeah, we, we, gotta clean it up. we gotta get rid of all this. Well and then we need to get universal on part numbers too. Right. Yeah. And how we handle them. Which so that's what you look challenge. how long that took, you know, to do that. Well, you screw it up, will you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you guys know the steps to do it because you know, you were helping me, you kinda of, you were talking with me, so I know that you know what to do. Um my thing is, is, even though it's in all the shops, you don't have to delete each shop as long as the quality line is zero. You can delete it straight out of the catalog. And here's where we're going to run into a problem, is not having universal numbers. Everybody, like uh, Bridgestone 123 tire. I might enter it B123. Uh, somebody else might enter it one, just a 123. With a space, uh, without a space. Recap. Somebody might enter one two three R, and I may enter B one two three R. So, so what you all, universal. what you really need to do is you one need to, as a group decide. This is going to be the AutoZone part number that we use for a steer tire. This in, in, in the catalog, that's your master number. Everything else that you're talking about, put those under the cross reference. That way, if you order it by that number, when you receive it that way or charge it to an RO, it'll flip back to the Auto zone primary number. That's what you need to do. So, like in your part catalog here on this exhaust clamp right here, okay? This number up here 
you guys should say, this is the number that we want to apply to the repair order, no matter <coughs> who charges it out. But if you order it under, let's say yours has an A at the end of it, and yours has a B, you might have a C. <coughs> that's how we order it, that's how we receive it, that's how we charge it out, but it, it ought, the system will flip it to this number right here if you go under this cross-reference tab uh, right here and then once this opens up there's three choices let me show you which one to use right here the cross-reference button the third one the one on the right you could put in your number my number whoever's number and when we type in that number it'll accept it but it will flip it to the auto zone primary number. And that's what the light so is going to print. So just click has. add. Yeah, so click add. And it's going to give you so a new let me form. Add, I'll just do this. I'll put in something crazy like a bunch of letters. Is it going to default your label to the auto zone number? The print yes. label? It'll just default your, yes. Hmm. So if I put in something crazy like this, let me copy it. And then the manufacturer, it's got to have a manufacturer. You use the right one or you can put five X's. save it now no matter where you put in that number I'll just do it right here we can test it on an RO it's gonna change and it's gonna change so if I type in that number here and I tab it's gonna say nope the number that's gonna go against whatever we have a few cross references it's gonna flip to the auto zone number I think Break chamber is where I've seen it. Absolutely <clears throat> right. That back in the day, that's what should have been done. You guys should have, and, and this is common, trust me, is you should come up with one number that's going to be standard for your company. Yeah, just, Let's clean it up first. It, where you buy Let's it clean up our ROs and POs first. Mm -hmm. The only time you, time you run into problems is you can have the same number that has a different manufacturer, like a gun I can break drum is a 3136B, but also I think Webb or somebody else has a 3136B. Then you then you tell the system allow duplicate part numbers as long as the manufacturers are different. But you can get crazy. But where we run into a problem, let's just say uh, David's got uh, Gunite AS1140 in his system. And then I get an invoice from Truck Pro and it just says 1140. Yeah. I put it in there, it doesn't say, and I just type in 1140, and it says not found, so I create a new part. That's what you don't So know. I don't know That's that what's he's, it yeah. came in under AS yeah, 1140. That's where we get so many parts in the catalog. And that, and that <coughs> to be honest with you, where that, where that problem comes in is because you don't have control over your parts catalog. No big deal, it is what it is, but cut, we always tell customers <coughs> now, we first implement them, somebody has to control the parts oh, catalog. So I know if you don't have a robber can put them in. The <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. I know you don't have a, a parts person, <laughs> bet at all. but there should be somebody like that to controls that yeah. to allow that. Trust me, we go back to companies years later, just like now, and we clean this stuff up for them because they've hired somebody to do the procurement, procurement I say, and they control the parts catalog. That, that's how it works. It's, it's not right or wrong, it's just the way it was. It's just the way it was. Yeah. Well, retail is so much messier. Oh, gosh. You ain't kidding. Yeah. So that's how it happens, and that's going to happen. Because you don't have the time to sit there and look through the catalog, try to figure out how did he put it in here, or is it in here? You just rock and roll. And superseded part numbers superseded. In, in, ends up the same situation. Unfortunately, when we call and give them part number, I'm going to say Freightliner out of accelerator it may not give you the new part number it may have su superseded you're looking it up and then you get another part in so it can supersede several times within a year yeah. and they have a mixture of stock back and forth. yeah aftermarket versus oe okay so back to the tires this that we're still on the tire module you want to clean your tires up if you can okay let me think of what else on the tire to be replaced okay so you'll have to tell the system where it can be used. That's where that setting comes into play that I turned on 
that keeps you from charging the tire to the wrong axle. Because I've told it, if it's not identified here, the mechanic can't use it. So it keeps us a recap trailer tire off of a steer axle. So Even there's a different tire size than what we three sizes we said we had right, right. there. Okay. And then you've got all this information here that's got to be filled in too. And it wouldn't let you save unless you did, so you're gonna know that. But and a lot of this is stuff we've already already talked about. We already did that drop down, we already did this drop down, the rest of the stuff's just fill in the blank stuff. So one question. Sometimes we can get 14 ply tires, same tire, but one's a 14, one's a 16. How do we depreciate between the two? Unless you, unless you care, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd like to say, yeah, yeah. You would have to put it in twice. You'd have to put it in twice, and in two different numbers. Yeah, it's not worth it. Not, not for that. Because I don't think it'll even. Let me, let me look and see if you can actually enter. You might be all on the ply might be able to enter two values. So this is 14, we do 14 slash number. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, you can do that, but that's kind of silly, but it doesn't matter. Okay. It's not that big a deal. What? We go back to um, the tires as parts. Can you clean that up from there? Can you move one of those parts to a cross reference? Like, can I take an XE2 and move it? Cross reference the steering head from that screen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if this tire, yes, yeah, just click on the cross reference button and then go to the cross reference button when it when this window opens up. Go to the cross reference tab, then when this window opens, go to the cross reference button. Then you could add down here in the bottom right. Is that what you're asking? I don't know if we want to do that though. But you guys will be aware of purpose. Just be consistent on, on you can do that. That whatever number you got up here is the one that's going to apply to the RO. I think what else, guys, on setup on tires? Um, I believe that's it because after that, anytime you go to charge out, a mechanic goes to charge out a tire. It doesn't matter if he's doing it from TTP, if you're doing it manually to the repair order through TMP, you know, you're clicking add. If it recognizes that part number with a part type of tire, it's gonna say, you gotta go through the module to do it. So it's gonna ask you the questions. What, why are you taking it off? What are you putting on? <clears throat> and so forth. The mechanic would have to he would actually have to hit that little tire icon in TTP. He couldn't just put in a part number because it'll say you got to go through the module. Okay. Your vendor ROs. Okay. When whoever's doing vendor repair orders, that's going to be a little different. Let me. It is what's different. What's going to happen there is you guys are missing right now. You're telling me <laughs> on a vendor repair order you're lumping everything under a service line. So mm -hmm. therefore you're losing that, that ability. You're losing tire data. You're losing tire data. Because that tire, yeah, is going to have been changed mm -hmm. on the road. It may have a brand new drive on there. It's in the system. It's still going to show the old tread depth that was on there before you replaced it. So technically on a vendor repair order, you should itemize the tire because there's an actual little box, if you haven't seen it, that says mount tire. When you click that, it opens up the, all the positions on the truck and it asks you which one, or trailer, which one did you replace. So if you all haven't seen that. So is there a way to in service equipment with tire characteristics yep, yep, you're besides good. configuration? Yes. So setting up the steers at 16, 30 seconds, setting up the drives at 20, or third wheelers at 32, 30 seconds. Yeah. Technically, whatever. you should have. 28. You, if you haven't, that's what we call onboarding. Meaning, once you've done all this, what we just did, mm -hmm. and got it ready to go. The tire, that tire the part. Right, the tire part. That footprint, so when you bring in a truck, that footprint <coughs> of that truck 
when the mechanic brings it up, should be empty blank. Mm -hmm. There's no data. That's strictly from the TTP. But from TMW, is there a way to preset it up for the mechanic? Okay. No. Uh, I was afraid of that. Let me think yeah. of that. Because that's, I got to think real quick. If you, no, you can't. You've got to go through the market. You have to go through TTP. Because. And then you have to have the inventory of the tire. So, like, a, you in service a new trailer. If you, don't if you want to set it up initially, you're going to have to do a section for tires. You're going to have to have some sort of inventory. Technically, you don't have to have inventory because the first time you tell it this tire goes on the steer, this one goes on the drive, it, it doesn't look to relieve inventory. It just looks to borrow that, that, that definition of that tire. I can show you. It, it, you don't have to actually have any quantity on hands to onboard. You only have to have quantity on hand to replace. Because we're going to have a lot of onboarding to do when yeah. we start oh, it, digging in. On the initial this. setup, it asks you what it, it's blank. Yeah, I've seen it kind of both ways, and yeah. it, it, that's why I asked. Technically, you're right. Every truck and every trailer that's running that you're going to track, you're going to have to update that tire with 30 seconds in the air pressure. Air pressure is a given, but you're going to have to update for 30 seconds. From the TTP. From the TTP. And co different customers do it different ways. They have campaigns where they bring them in yeah. every day. They only wait to do them on PMs. I mean, there's no right or wrong, whatever you want to do. It. You can do a campaign list, too. We did it with the fire extinguishers. <clears throat> Remember when we went to the bigger fire extinguisher? I tried it, and it worked. Right. From, the... From a campaign. And it automatically creates ROs. But do we want to have that many open ROs for tires? What we was doing was when you had a new trailer in and the first time it, it, came you came in for and need a tire change, just did it then, then, then did it then because that first field's blank right. and you could just enter that <coughs> be, a beginning 12, 30 seconds or 11, 30 seconds in and then off and tire pressure up. on, on a sky has tire pressure on on the original where it was blank and tire pressure off. Or when it comes for PM. Do you, does AutoZone, do you have a tire program going with any tire companies right now where they come in and do yard checks? We've done it in the past, not spotty, not but it's not a... Some, you do, okay. Some companies are still utilizing outside, or utilizing them, you know, hey, you want our tire business, you're gonna come in and do a yard check every week. They actually have that data already, and we, I think, have been able to import that. Where you where your onboarding could become an import, but you have to have uh, the data and supply it to us on a template in order for us to do it. What kind of template? Excel? Well, yeah, that's what it would be, but I'm not Todd. seeing it. But, uh, Todd. Um, if you had that data, you would just, I would have to find out what we, what we need to fill out and give it to you, that's all. And then you would copy and paste, or copy and paste, or whatever. But you want it to be accurate because some customers have said, well, I can't just about. update all my units with brand new tires. Well, <laughs> you're already defeating the purpose of the tire module because you're saying that everything's brand new when really it's maybe about ready to be replaced. So we can't do, we won't do that for you. But. Well, unfortunately, and you see everybody sees a lot on Michelin invoices and, and they've said they've battled it is whoever's changed the tire don't list the tire position. Yes. So you get an invoice <coughs> and unless the driver tags it out of service so we can check it and change it out to patch and tread yeah. depth, then we never know yeah. which tire position exactly it is. Right. You're exactly right. Or vendor ROs, yeah, you've got to, it is. You go to enter the data and you want to isolate the tire and you don't have any idea where it went. Now you got to go out there and look. you got to call the driver. Oh no! On the uh, you got to have somebody to almost man. On Michelin on call, you can go look at the the road call. Yeah. Oh, they're they're B two B. They take pictures and they do they do put the tire position on. I mean, it's uh, there, but you got to do the work for for the technician that, that did the road service. Now the invoice won't state that; they just bill you the the make of the tire, right, based on the national account. And so, sometimes, sometimes. On the invoice, yeah, yeah sometimes. sometimes. Every once in a while, I have it on my invoice. Yeah. If you go into the on-call, the actual call, you can look at it online and 
most of the time I've seen it. There, you know, yeah, I was going to ask about the tires. Yeah. Take a place. We'll take a picture of the failed tire and, the, and note the one they're putting it on and the position they're putting it on. They're just not putting it on there every time they create a, a invoice. No, your invoice, I agree. I mean, you get an invoice and you've got a tire on there, and you know it came from a, you know, a road call, but other than the price on it, there's nothing you're going to tell. I mean, you know, they make a model of tire that they put on there, but you don't know if it went right front or left front. Now, this tire review button here, if, if, yeah. When your mechanics are taking tires off, you all said that you're giving them the ability to pick which bucket it goes into. If I'm not mistaken, I thought we ran that. Okay. There was data, there was a lot of data in here. There's like 200 pages times 30. So what is that, 6,000 tires? I call it 66. Sitting in here right now that technically should have been dealt with. Okay. 6,000? 200 well, we pages. it all out. 200 pages times 30. We could. That'd be the easiest thing. To yeah. To go. 6,000 line items. Yeah. Like all 66. And then you'd have to be on a schedule to manage it. Yes, exactly. That's why I was saying the tire module's kind of got to be managed because you've got to go in here and then you've got you got to move it to scrap, move it to recap, or move it to inventory. You have to like monthly or weekly probably. I know. Because if you move it to recap, then it look you know it's looking for tires you sent out to the capper if you guys cap your tires, and, and then when you. you know, I don't know. Do you track? Do you guys cap your tires? Number one. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you uh, inventory recaps? I'm sure you do. Yes. Yeah, we yes. inventory recaps. So, do you do you uh, inventory runouts? So, like, if, a, if you put a steer tire on a truck and he goes down the road and curbs it, puts a slice in the sidewalk, but it's still good. You're going to use it as a trailer. I used runout. to try to keep up with that. Now, do you guys do that? Do you, keep, do you put that back in inventory? Is a trailer a used? I put it back in as a used tire, used, used steer, used, used steer. Tire. You don't care I think what we have like a value of a dollar on okay. it or something yeah. for inventory purposes because at that point we've already charged the value yes. of the, the new tire out, right? Because technically, yes, to answer your question. Technically, guys, with the tire module, let go. You've already charged it out, and I get that. That's the easiest way to do it. That tractor ate the cost of that tire, period. Technically, with the tire module, you could put that back in inventory at the $400 value because it's got a lot of tread left, and you're just going to use it as a run out. And what it would do is credit back that truck 50 bucks for the tread he did wear off of it. And now when you, when you use that run out to put on a trailer, that trailer gets charged the $400. I mean, can we take That's what the tire module does. Can we take that option away from the technician, the review, yeah. and just make it scrap or? No, you can take it where Cap. that all it does is go into a review bucket, and then yeah. one of you all would have to manage it. <clears throat> right now, they're picking what bucket it goes. Uh, we just need to coach them not to use review unless. Can we make them all go to scrap? No. No. <laughs> No, they can only, I can only make it where they have no choice and it automatically goes to review or they have a choice and you have to, they pick which one you have to review. Yeah, we have to coach them on it. This is deeper than I've ever dug into this higher module, honestly. Yeah, that's why, that's why it's adding a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work and it, you have to manage it. <laughs> so all these have to be gone through every single one. Well, I mean, we've played with it, obviously. <laughs> I mean, look at all. Yeah, I mean, I think instead of trying to go through and identify, yeah. I think I'm talking about six thousand. You, you blow them all out, and then we establish what the protocol six, is. Yeah, the, right. the, the six. Yeah, the six will be. And then, if, you know, and then we talk about the, the cross reference piece, right? You know, because we have some shops, we, we run primarily two tires, Bridgestone and Mission. Okay. So, you know, we've got some shops that are 100% Michelin primarily. 
they'll, they'll do a Bridgestone on a rare occasion, and we have other shops that primarily are Bridgestone or New Michelin on an occasion, but you just build those standards in there, and then if you have to make a cross-reference, because we all know, especially with tires, there's preferred steer tires that we like to get. They're not always available anymore, right? And they, you know, so we gotta take the flavor of the mind. <laughs> so true. But yeah, and that's where I mean, it's goes quite a, bit. a lot of the same tires duplicate, just somebody else, you know, they manually decided to add it in at whatever made sense to them at the time, even though it's already in there. Okay. It handles too, I don't know if you all rotate tires, it handles rotation too. Yes. Do you have spare tires you carry on your truck? No. no. Oh, okay. no. But, but we do have spare, spare tire. tires. <laughs> spare tire also, but it has to be set up so it knows that it has a spare tire on there. But we can do rotations too. It, it, it does. Other questions on it? There's a lot to it, man. It's, it's, it's harder to implement the tire module on an existing customer than it is a brand new one. Because you've already got data and systems and running tires. And, but it looks like you've got it going. I just checked that it's it's actually turned on. We've been trying. Yeah. And then they got a training aspect too. So I got a new wash tire guy that has limited English English speaking skills. So. Definitely. Well, how easy is it to go through and delete all these? One at a time. Uh, Y'all can blow them out. Do it right you guys might be looking. I'll, I'll, I'll have to get some support to do it. I can't pull that. If I could get your server, I could do it right now. But have y'all started to publish more and more of the, the, from the training website, more of the training videos in Spanish? I, I don't think so, Dave. As far as I know, I don't think so. Carolyn, the lady that handles that, I would have to ask her, but man, I would kind of doubt it because She's so busy right now just trying to keep up. Okay. So is that when we were at Insight, that came up quite a bit in, in oh, it, it's, quite a few of the sessions for a, a lot of the different fleets operating on this where they wanted some of the you know, basic video training. Could be in both of them. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're we're seeing that a lot, a lot more. Okay. And it's been an issue with our customers, you know, with our bordering states and Southern states. Yeah. So since she's so busy, is that why I'm not getting access? Maybe because I'm not getting access to the training videos. If you're going into the help menu here and what you see is all. Yeah, now there's a form where you submit your email and all that. And yep. Carolyn is the lady's name, and if I'm not mistaken, she's the only one doing documentation. Done an excellent job of what she's been able to get out there, but it's a, it's a busy job. So I'm ready for bingo. Yeah. <laughs> We're a good pause place. We are <laughs> before my head explodes. We'll call a timeout. No, no, we're in perfect stop. Do lunch. Yep. Um, Bingo? Do you want to see? You want to do bingo before lunch? No, this is too yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's give let's a, see we get a winner. Let's see a winner. Let's see if we get a winner. Yeah. Winner, winner, winner. Everybody's waiting on one box. Has anyone been here yet? It's already been here. It's got his super suit. Here, I'll call. Get my dirt yeah. load off. Yeah, that's the safety. Don't freak this stuff. All right, everybody got their dollars ready? Dollars? 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 Are dollars already covered? Dollars? 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 Dabo Inc. Dabo 14. Paul Finger. Paul Finger. Paul Finger. Remember lift gate safety when mm. you were working on Paul Finger lift gates. I two different ones. We want you to be able to count to ten. That's right. I just Nine and a half. half. Four. B four. Meritor online brake training. I need like three different ones now. Braking leader in both size and capacity for commercial vehicle industry. All right, one more. One more. Yeah. Five. Eighteen. Eighteen. <clears throat> Now we're back to staying hydrated. It's important in the winter also. God Just bless. I didn't know that. What? All right. No bingos? 
No, we're going to have to keep rolling the dice. One more, David. One more. One more. One more. We're going to have to get through these. That's right. 